of Labour to advocate for lifting the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Dr. Peter Sharples. Because it's my role as Minister of Māori Affairs to advocate Māori aspirations for the optimal quality of life. Come now to question number 12 in the name of Joe Goodhue. Speaker, to the Minister of Housing, what benefits will the extra $124.5 million of investment announced today for the Housing New Zealand Corporation provide to the people of New Zealand? Mr. Bill Heatley. Mr Speaker, well, the initiative is a, a double win. First of all, we can address the disgraceful legacy uh, left by the previous government, whose inaction to upgrade state houses meant that Labor was a slum landlord. And secondly, New Zealand skilled trades people the men and women who support those tradespeople will continue to be in jobs for the next 12 uh, to 18 months. Joe Goodhue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the Minister, what actions has the Minister taken to ensure that the $124.5 million of increased funding announced today for Housing New Zealand Corporation will help deliver economic stimulus as soon as possible? Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Phil Heatley. Well, since the approval of the stimulus package by Cabinet, I've been working with my officials uh, to ensure that upon the announcement we can proceed uh, pretty quickly. The package achieves three goals. First, the need to improve the living conditions of state house tenants due to the government's, previous government's neglect in the area. Secondly, it gives the ability to be able to start as soon as possible, particularly with the upgrades, because much of, many of those will not require consents. And thirdly, uh, of course, the ability of this work to stimulate local economies right around uh, New Zealand. I understand from my officials that it will take approximately four to six weeks to award upgrade contracts uh, and get the work underway as soon as possible. That brings question time to a point of order. The Honourable Trevor Mallon. Uh, Mr Speaker, I, uh, uh, in answer to, question, to a supplementary question from, uh, on question four, uh, the Prime Minister indicated that uh, a particular school project in Hutt South, uh, in my electorate, had been brought forward. Um, Mr Speaker, I've examined the list. Uh, and it's clear that that is not the case. It was in Rimataka in Upper Hutt, and what I'd invite uh, the Minister of Education to do would be to brief the Prime Minister so he could correct order, his reply. Order. <laughs> the Honourable Member knows that that is not a point of order. He may believe there is something wrong with an answer given, uh, but uh, it is not a matter of a point of order if he believes that uh, an answer has been an error. There are other channels for following that up. That concludes uh, question time for today, and uh, I call on the interrupted debate on the motion for an address and reply. Motion Honourable for address Dave. and reply to His Excellency the Governor-General's speech from the throne and the amendment there proposed thereto and the amendment to the amendment. The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, as we um, work through the address and reply debate, it's become clear that uh, the state of the economy and the outlook for the economy uh, has become uh, the major issue that the New Zealand Government has to deal with. The Government has made uh, its strategy quite clear. We are setting out to achieve two things over the next uh, few years. The first is to protect people from the hard edge of recession, and the second thing is to get this economy ready for recovery. And that means that any of the decisions that we take in the short term to assist people through this recession need to be consistent with our